Hi friends, hope you're doing well. I'm Steve, welcome back to my channel. Hey, first I wanna thank everyone who's been watching my channel and has subscribed. I'm a bit overwhelmed by the response, but I am so grateful and it means the world to me. So thank you very much, I really appreciate it. So KISS played their final concert, December 2nd, 2023, for some 20,000 roaring fans at Madison Square Garden. Now, I have to admit it's a bit melancholy for me, as I'm sure it is for most KISS fans, because we've got to come to the realization that the rock machine that is KISS will be no more. But is it? I'll get to that in a minute. Reviewers who were at the concert said it was full of everything we've grown to expect from KISS. The fire, the theatrics, the loud music, performances of their biggest hits. And while most of them praised their final performance, there were those who didn't. You probably are aware that since the end of the world tour has started, there's been accusations of them using backing tracks and vocal tracks that Paul's been lip syncing to. Well, that's been going on the whole time. Let's face it. If you've heard Paul talk recently, his voice is trashed. So what would you rather hear? Paul struggling to sing anything and sounding terrible after you paid all that money for the tickets or watching him lip sync to pristine vocals enjoying the show? Let me know what you think in the comments. Those watching the performance on pay-per-view noticed the inclusion of what they called fake crowd acoustics. If you know anything about Kiss or anyone else's live albums for that matter, it's not uncommon to overdub crowd sounds to pull the user into the experience. Why not? I mean, it helps the user get a better feel of what the concert's like when they're there. They get the loud crowds and it's they're part of it in as much as they can. It doesn't bother me. Uh, I think it's better than a dull background or no background at all, but what do you think? Paul relayed his feelings during the show saying, quote, you made us possible. We will always remember and love you. Now, Gene has been adamant that this is it. Kiss is done touring and quote, going out on top. But are they really? Now at the end of the show, in a grand finale twist, Gene, Paul, Tommy, and Eric all left the stage only to reappear a few minutes later on a huge video screen as avatars. That's right, digital representations of the band members performing the song, God Gave Rock and Roll to You. Now the digital Paul said, before the song started, quote, Kiss Army, your love, your power has made us immortal. The new Kiss era starts now. Right. Anyway, they, they use cutting edge technology to create the avatars of the band. They wore motion capture suits and went through their emotions like they were doing a concert, recorded them, and used those to bring the larger than life counterparts to life. Gene and Paul think this is the way of the future, but is it really? These avatars were created in collaboration between George Lucas's Industrial Light and Magic and Pop House Entertainment Group. The companies recently did a similar thing for the band ABBA. That's right, ABBA. They did something called the ABBA Voyage, a show in London where the audience was witness of the first full concert performance by digital representation of the band members. Now, Paul says the band deserves to go on. It's bigger than us. Pierre Sutton, the CEO of Pop House, says that with this technology, KISS can preserve their legacy forever. He says KISS could have a concert in three different cities on three different continents on the same night. But it's not KISS. It's avatars. It's digital representation. Isn't it like watching a video? We are already in a time where there are concerns over AI creating music. I mean, there's a congressional committee that heard testimony just on November 29th, 2023, about how AI should be handled. You can already replace voices with representations of famous singers on your songs. And there's the deep fakes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, Google Tom Cruise fake. This stuff's starting to get scary. Now, doesn't this take us a step closer to replacing the human performer altogether? And as the technology improves, how would you even know? But hey, making money as a musician, it's getting harder and harder nowadays. Touring is really the only way they can make money. By doing it this way, everything's a light show. It's all programmed. There's a few techs, a few road crews to set up the light show and take it down. 
no performers, you've saved some money, right? I don't know. What do you think? Now, something else crossed my mind. Do you think perhaps KISS was testing the waters when they were using tracks and lip syncing to see if the fans would react poorly to it or just let it slide? I mean, let it, letting it slide, doesn't that remove the need for the live performer to be there as long as there's a representation of someone doing exactly the same moves? Is that enough? Do you think that this is better or worse than them putting other musicians in the makeup and letting them perform? Would you still pay 100, 200 bucks to see one of these shows? I'm curious. Let me know what you think in the comments. So as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, smash the like button if you would. And if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing. Until next time, just remember that no matter what they do, or no matter what they say, Rock's not dead. Take care.